uh, Dale, Sister Evelyn Triplett, remember her. She's got to have a injection on Wednesday. J.C. McCurry, continue to pray for him. Uh, Sister Betty Hamilton, Betty had to go home. She's got an infection, and she's taking the antibiotics, and she got deathly sick in the Sunday school hour. So remember Betty in your prayer. Sister Margaret Walker is in the Johnson City Medical Center. Lorraine Mullinex, continue to pray for her. Uh, Brother Jay told me that to her back, she's no better at all, so pray for her. Remember the Dean Barnett family, as uh, her memorial service was this past week. Sister, uh, Sister Edith Elliott, I'd ask you to remember her. Uh, Musette Sexton, Dana Ferguson, Jack Campbell. Pray for all of our shut-ins, our missionaries, our nation, our families, our church. Pray for revival. Amen. Pray for the lost. And then this coming uh, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, tent meeting will begin with Dr. Ralph Sexton in Bryson City, North Carolina at 7 o'clock. So remember those needs. How many has got needs this morning? Well, listen, let's look at the Lord this morning and ask God to help us and God to meet with us in a special way and all. Uh, uh, Brother Tommy Kelly, would you pray for us? Amen. 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 Come on, choir. And if you'd like to join us and have sung before, come on up. We're just going to gather and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. about this great nation, this place that we love today, and a lot of our songs, in fact, most all of our songs, are geared towards celebrating God and country, and this is one you're welcome to sing with the choir. It's called, My Country, Tis of Thee, Sweet Land of Liberty. It's number 634. If you want to sing, you're welcome. Okay,
got, uh, a pastor had mentioned, I was just going to mention to you folks, you know, he, our pastor's not in jail today. You know, he volunteered to set off fireworks here on the 4th and uh, come to find out it was against the law, but we were just on the verge of having to go down and bail our pastor out. But, <laughs> but he's with us today. We're going to have a trio sing this morning. We usually have a quartet, but of course we know that Miss Beth moved on to the Knoxville area. So we now have a trio, and we have two barefoot, well, <laughs> one barefoot and two shod. So. But I love to hear these ladies sing, and this song is called I Have Been Blessed. There's not enough. 
Nobody can sing it like that man does. It's called God Bless the USA. But the choir is going to help with the chorus, and if you know what you join in with us, and we're going to sing God Bless the USA. In America great with all its flaws. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd work for all my life. And I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I'd thank my God above to be living here today. Cause the flag still stands for freedom. And they can't take that away. And I'm proud to be American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston and New York to LA, there's pride in every American heart. It's time we stand and say. In America, where at least I know I'm free, and I won't forget the men who died, who gave that life to me, and I gladly stand up next to you and defend this place today, cause there ain't no doubt I love this land, God bless the USA. Defenders still today, cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Give our nation a hand. Amen. We want you to stand with us on this last song. We're singing songs about our land and how much God has blessed this nation. 630, I think, is one of the most beautiful songs written in celebration, the recognition of America. Stand with us, number 630. We're going to do the first and the fourth verse of America the Beautiful.
brother in fellowship, tell somebody you love them. again and we certainly welcome you today to Oakland Avenue Baptist Church and especially those that are visiting with us today and our ushers are standing here at the front and if you're visiting with us today we'd love to have a record of your visit and we've got a packet of the church information and our ushers are getting ready to walk down and if you're visiting just hold your hand up just hold your hand up they'll give you a packet that's right hold your hand up and they'll give you a packet, and it's got information about church, and it's got a visitor's card, and we'd ask you, if you would, to take it and fill it out. In a few moments, we'll receive an offering and ask you to drop that card into the offering plate. Let me read a thank you card to the church with gratitude. The time you've given, the hearts that you've touched, the lives you've blessed, these are true gifts from God. Thank you for sharing his love. Thanks for all your kindness and beautiful flowers and food and all. And that's from the Barnett family. And then uh, let me make one more time. If any of you are contemplating, still thinking about going to Israel on the Holy Land tour, uh, this week probably is the last week that you'll get in if you're going on with the, with the group, which it, I'm traveling with. But if there's people that comes along later, uh, they'll be, uh, you'll fly probably on another flight, uh, and uh, we'll all meet up in Tel Aviv, but uh, we won't be all on the same flight going over. So if you're contemplating going, uh, do try to get registered this week. I think there's brochures still um, out in the uh, foyer if you're thinking about going to Israel with us. All right. Let me remind you this evening at 6 o'clock, we'll be going to the Pavilion on the Hill, and we'll be having a special service up there this evening. We're going to, we've got a sound system, everything set up. We'll be having some singing, 
and different things on the hill. And uh, how would you like to have a big old roasting ear put on the grill and it got just right and then open that thing up and pour butter all over it just and smother it, wrap it back up, put it in there and cook it. We're, we're going to have some of that tonight, right? How'd you like to have some fried potatoes in an old skillet like your mama used to fry? Some of you don't know how mama used to fry them, do you? <laughs> Amen. If you do, you'll be back tonight. So, uh, watermelon, hamburger, hot dogs, all the good. It'd be a good evening. Invite your family, friends, and uh, bring somebody back tonight. We'll have plenty of hot dogs, hamburgers, and and uh, watermelon, all the goodies tonight. And I, uh, just a good 4th of July celebration on the hill and a service and a message and uh, singing and all. So we'll be at the pavilion starting at 6 o'clock. As Jerry said, we were going to start at 7, and we were going to have a fireworks show. But we found out it was illegal. And I heard uh, on 910 they were going to enforce it this year. Well, that means there won't be no fireworks shot around my place this year, right? Huh? I got a question. Why make a law, an ordinance, if you don't enforce it? Amen. All right, so much for that. Our men have come. We'll receive the morning giving. You give as the Lord has blessed and prospered you. And uh, if, you, if you're, uh, I'm going to, over to the Tent Crusade in Bryson City on Thursday, and I'll be leaving the church here at 3.30. If there's any that'd like to ride over with me, just be here. It's about two and a half hours over there. So if you'd like to go with us, uh, uh, just meet us here at the church at 3.30. All right? All right, let's look to the Lord and ask the blessing on the giving this morning. Brother John Shafis, would you pray for us this morning? Amen. Amen. Swells with pride every time I step outside. 
I see old glory waving in the wind. Then a tear comes to my eye when I think of those who died. They are heroes of our liberty. But one day there was a stand, not an army, just one man, and it took place on a hill called Calvary. At the place since forces fell, my Savior conquered hell. He is the hero of our liberty, the greatest hero. invite you to take your Bibles this morning, one verse for our text this morning, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. I feel this morning almost like being a Jonathan Edwards. I have not done what Jonathan Edwards did before he preached that message. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. He fasted for two weeks. And he sought God in such a burden. And I confess I have not been there in that state. But I confess that I have been before God seeking his face for this message this morning. I kind of feel like Jonathan Edwards just standing here this morning and reading to you verbatim, as I wrote down and outlined the message for this morning, when I think of America, when I think of America, listen to what the Word of God says in verse 34 of Proverbs 14, righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people, righteousness right living, absent of greed and absent of jealousness and pride and envy and malice and hate and lasciviousness and all kinds of, of evil ways. When we live righteous, God what? That nation is exalted. That nation is blessed. That nation is lifted up. But he says a nation that lives in sin is a nation of reproach, of death, of destruction, of misery, of pain, of sadness. I don't know about you, I'd rather live in that nation that lives righteous is that nation that lives sinful, wouldn't you? 
Well, if you don't know which place you'd like to live, you're in a bad shape this morning. Amen. I want to live in that place of honesty and integrity. And I want to live in that place where they got love and kindness and live for one another and, and exhort one another instead of living in that world full of greed. Get all you can, can all you can get and heck with everybody else. And that's about where our society has come today. When I think of America, let's pray and ask God to speak to our hearts this morning. Father, I thank you this morning for the freedom that I have to stand and preach the message that you have given me. And I pray that thou shall endue me with power from on high. And I pray thou shall empty of me of myself and self-wisdom and self-effort. And I pray that thou shall endue me in the fullness of the Holy Spirit of God and to stand and speak under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I pray this morning, Lord, that we would all understand this morning, freedom will cease to be when freedom ceases to cause. And I pray this morning, Lord, we would understand that bad men rule because good men stand silent. And I pray this morning, Lord, we'll all come to one mind and one accord to stand for that that is right, and stand against that that is wrong. I pray this morning that I would minister to our hearts when I think of America. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. When I think of America, when I think of America, I think of loyalty and patriotism, but mostly I think of freedom. I think of our forefathers who fought and died to give us this great free nation. When I think of America, I think of freedom to stand here and preach this morning. I think of the freedom that we have to still propagate the gospel and to worship the Lord Jesus Christ freely. When I think of America, I think of the rest of the world. Most of you have not saw the rest of the world, have you? How many of you have lived any time, spending time in the third world country? One, two, three. Most of you have never saw the red way the rest of the world lives. You should have been with me a few years ago in, in Asia when it, I saw the little baby son starving to death and, and saw the, uh, the streets of dirt and mud huts and all. You ought to travel to the Far East and to the Middle East and you ought to travel just across the border to Mexico. And by the way, if you don't love America, just travel to Canada. You think... Canada is a modernized country. Canada is one of the most atheistic, God-denying places almost on the face of the earth today. You ought to be in Toronto, Canada about 2 o'clock in the morning and see what's parading the streets. You ought to go to San Francisco and see what's in San Francisco at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. You ought to see the rest of the world. You ought to go to Amsterdam and be in Amsterdam and see them uh, performing uh, uh, sex with animals on the street. You ought to go to Paris and see what's on the streets of Paris. You ought to go to London and see what's on the streets of London. I'm afraid most of us don't know what the rest of the world is living like. And when I think of America, I think of the places in the world that I've been and saw and visit. And I don't know about you. Thank God I'm still an American. Let us celebrate today that we still are blessed with the freedom of worship and the freedom to bear arms and the freedom this morning of free speech. Thank God this morning we still have those freedom. What kind of America are we living our children and our grandchildren? I tell you this morning what America needs. America needs some bold Christians to stand in the gap and make a difference. We need a God-sent revival that will rescue the perish and, and save the lost. When I think of America, where did America come from as a nation? The history of our nation, very few people in America know the history of our country. And I'm reminded of what Woodrow Wilson said in a speech. He said, when a people do not know where they came from, the people do not know who they are. And if the people do not know who they are, they do not know where they're headed. And I'm afraid that's where America is at. I think of Christopher Columbus. By the way, Christopher Columbus didn't discover America. 
Christopher Columbus doesn't have nothing to do with America except Christopher Columbus was an Italian sailed under the Spanish flag and crossed the Atlantic Ocean four times and did not land on the soils of America, but he landed in San Salvador in 1492, and there was the Spanish colonies and the Spanish country ended up in South America, Central America, and Florida, but never on the shores of the United States. But in 1607, you've got three ships that lands uh, at Jamestown. And those settlers that stepped ashore at Jamestown, they stepped there ashore to claim a nation of freedom. That they were tired of living under the tyrants of Europe and the tyrants of kings and tyrants of dictatorship. And they were looking for a place that they could have freedom. In 1620, the Mayflower landed at Plymouth Rock. But that Mayflower had some people on it, set the first form of government for this country known as the Mayflower Compact. And they were on board and they realized they were going to come to this country and they were coming to start a new government. But before they ever landed on shore, they sat down and drawed up the Mayflower Compact to guide this, uh, their government when they landed and began to establish this new country. See, the pilgrims came to advance the freedom of faith to worship the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. 1700 to 1770, you had this young uh, colonies that were slipping back in uh, uh, to depravity and, and lasciviousness and sin. They began to make their corn uh, uh, whiskey uh, and began to turn away from the, the truth that they came here to settle. But all of a sudden we had a wakening under men like George Whitfield and Jonathan Edwards and John Wesley and David Brainerd. And by the way, the pulpits of this country, of all the denominations that were here at that time, were set aflame to preach the truth of God's Word. But in 1770, we've got the Boston Massacre. 1773, we've got the Boston Tea Party. The colonists said, we are tired of taxation without no representations. We're tired of you telling us what to do. We came here to be free. We came here to establish a nation of freedom. And we're rising up in rebellion. And when they did, the first order of business was the Declaration of, of Independence. And by the way, the Declaration of Independence states that all men are created by their Creator, has given them rights, and that those rights are given by God, and they are rights that are inalienable. They realized if we are free, it will be because God gives us the liberty and the freedom. And they made that statement in the Declaration of Independence. On July the 4th, 1776, there was 56 men that signed the Declaration of Independence. And they understood what they were doing. They understood the cost that it would cost them. These were wealthy men. These were men uh, of prestigious renown in the colony. But they signed their name understanding what they were doing, but they were willing to pay the price that we would be free. What chance would this young nation have against the greatest empire in the world that time, England? But by the providence of God, on August the 27th, 1776, George Washington and the Continental Army with 8,000 men, but the English Army had over 20,000 men. But you know what God did? God sent a fog and God sent the rain on the river and the British could not come up until George Washington and the Continental Army had fixed themselves in array of battle and won the battle. Only the providence of God. We won the war and a new nation, a republic! Most of you don't know the difference between a republic and a democracy. I get so cotton picking mad every time I listen to these sorry low down politicians. They ought to go back to school and they ought to study the history of this nation and understand this nation. When you pledge allegiance right there, how many of you pledge allegiance to a democracy? 
What did you pledge allegiance to? A republic. Can you understand where America is? We think it's a democracy. Our forefathers never set up a democracy. They set up a republic. By the people. For the people. That we would not be under tyrants and socialism and communism and dictatorship. And if we obeyed the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of this nation today, we would not be in the state we're in of heading to socialism and communism and dictatorship. Our forefathers set up in the Republic the three branches of government that we would never come to that place of being enslaved. But the problem is we got stinking backboneless sorry You say, preacher, you get agitated, don't I do. I wish there was enough redneck Americans to get some blood boiling in them this morning to realize I'd rather be dead than be red. I love my freedom. I love my freedom. I love America, but this nation was set up as a republic. The Constitution was wrote by men of integrity and men. No, they weren't all Christians. Some of them were deists and, and some of them were, uh, were different things that did not believe in the faith of Jesus Christ, but they respected the Christian doctrine and they respected the men of integrity that guided the Constitution and the Bill of Rights into the place that governs this great nation of ours. And you know what's happened today? We had a moral set of men that drawed up the Constitution of the United States, and we've got a Constitution of the United States today that an immoral society is wanting to change it. What about our children, church? We have forsaken God. We can't teach and pro- protect our children. In the schools today, they're absent of truth. I wish this morning you could get some righteous indignation about the ACLU, the humanist, the progressives. And you know something? I'm going to have to commend my president last night. At least there was a president of the United States stood up last night and said, I believe in the right of freedom of religion, and I believe that we ought to have prayer in the school. Now that sent 990,000 ulcers to all the progressives in this nation. I can see them this morning. Lord, we've got a president that believes in God. Oh, we've got a president that believes in prayer. Hallelujah, I believe in prayer. I believe there's still a God in heaven that guides the affairs of men. Oh, listen, what about our children? Our children are suffering. You know who is suffering more in this society today than anybody? Children. The youth of this country. The number one killer of the youth of America is suicide. Our children are paying a horrible price. Listen, we have chaos and confusion in our families, in our schools, in our streets. We have entertainment that is speeding, speeding up moral destruction. We've got the breakdown of laws. Our government wants to make more laws but not enforce the laws that are on the book. Hey, listen to me, folks. When you become a lawless society, you become a state of anarchy. What have you got in Argentina right now? What have you got in other places in the world today? When you cease to be willing to live by law and pay no attention to the law. Hey folks, listen. 
Our forefathers understood there were 13 colonies, but they understood they couldn't have 13 countries. They understood those 13 colonies had to come under the supervision of a federal government, but they understood the federal government should not come down and tell the state what to do. Federal laws were for federal government, state laws.